hi again my friends so in this video i'm going to teach you how to test ICs. we're gonna see live testing we're gonna check inputs and outputs and how to check if the ic is good or not so let's get started let's begin with this ic for example so for any ic i'm going to teach you how to know its purpose let's take for example this one here and this one here so very easy always locate the big capacitor do you see here we have big capacitor over here and also here we have big capacitor so if i check this one for example do you see we have five volt in the multimeter this one here we have 3.3 volts means this is the 3 volt 5 volt control ic let's check this one for example let's check this one here we have 1.5 this one 0 0.74 the half of 1.5 means this ic is for the ram and means also the kind of this ram is ddr3 as you can see here we have ddr3 so always locate the big capacitors so those basically 0 0.75 and 1.5 is output for this IC and also 3.3 volt and 5 volt is the output so this is the control for 3 volt 5 volt and this is the control for the RAM so what about inputs so we test here outputs so for the inputs in the other side over here you can just look for some capacitors serum capacitors like those that is in parallel if we check these capacitors do you see we have 19 volt this one also 19 volt this one also 19 volt also here you see 19 volt 19 volt 19 volt but once we find the output it's not important to check the inputs but if you didn't find outputs you have to go back and check the inputs the same for this one for example so here we find the outputs 0 0.74 and also 1.5 volt for the ram this is basically vdd and this is vtd so for the input once we have output here the input should be in this side so let's check here for example let's check this resistor we have 6.5 this capacitor 1.5 this is another output so here we have input so for the ram basically the input is six volt okay guys so always for ic we have inputs and outputs if you find outputs good if you didn't find outputs you, you have to go back and check for inputs of course inputs you can find 19 volt 5 volt enable clock etc i'm going to teach you all this let's see another ic for example let's look here always when you find an inductor means that is a circuit here this ic for example so if we check this ic the black probe in the ground where is the big capacitor here we have two big capacitors let's check it this is the ground basically let's check this side we have 1.8 volt this one also we have 1.8 volt 1.8 volt we know that is this is the output here also we will find 1.8 volt okay because always the inductor is where you can check also the output but what about the input here input of of course we're gonna check the resistors or the capacitor let's check this capacitor we have 3.3 volt so the input or the working voltage for this ic is 3.3 volt so it will receive 3.3 volt from this circuit over here okay from this circuit the 3 volt 5 volt circuit okay and then generate 1.8 volts and then generate 1.8 volt as you can see also for the ram and as i told you always we use inductor to check to output do you see always all inductors here for example also for this circuit if we check this inductor we have 1.5 volt those inductor of course we have here 5 volt and 3.3 volt but 
these two inductors belong to the same circuit so we're gonna find here 5 volt and 3.3 volt i will break down for you the ic inputs and outputs right now so let's see guys here we have two ic's we have here the first ic okay ic one okay and here we have another ic let's see I see two. Please pay attention. You're gonna find all about how to test ICs. So for every IC, we have input. Do you see? We have some inputs like this. Okay. And we have also output. So output, of course, could be connected to a coil, for example, or could be connected to another IC. Sometimes could be could be connected to a capacitor like this and then a coil and then you get here an output etc okay but for the input usually we find for the input the vn okay vn remember guys we find vn okay it could be 19 volts it could be 5 volt it could be also sometimes 3.3 volts okay and also you can find enable signal about 3.3 volt and the clock the clock basically about 1.5 volt so without these inputs we cannot get output and of course the ic is always connected to the ground and you will always find some ceramic capacitors also that is connected to the ic in one side and to the ground in the other side so what we want here is output here basically guys we have here inputs remember here we have inputs okay inputs okay here and over here we have outputs okay so inputs and outputs so once we get all inputs so for example let's assume that this is a three volt 5 volt IC. So once we get all inputs, we're gonna get the 3.3 volt here. And here, for example, just as example, here we're gonna get 5 volts. Of course, here we have another capacitor. So what is very important here is that when you check these two outputs, of course, in the two inductors here in this L1 and L2 basically when you L refer to inductors you can find sometimes L when you check the outputs and you find the outputs are missing means you have to means it's not the IC is the bad component no you have to go back and check first all inputs if all inputs are present are good and you don't have outputs means the IC is bad Sometimes, guys, you can find two ICs connected together like this, for example. So, after we get here 3.3 volt, it will be then applied to this IC and also 3.3 volt will be applied to this IC. And this IC, for example, will generate an output. Let's see, for example, we generate 1.8 volt. Okay, 1.8 volt. Of course, the same working principle, this IC also will have connected to the ground and some ceramic capacitors that are connected to the ground, C1 and C2. And of course, for this IC, the VCC is 5 volts, so we have here VCC and the 3.3 volt is enable signal, etc. So, if you didn't find 1.8 volts, okay guys? So the problem, the problem here is not the IC. We have to go and check the inputs. But sometimes the absence or the, the cause of 1.8 volt absence is not the IC, neither this input. It could be this input because here we have two ICs. So always you have to go in this direction, okay? Okay, you have to go always in this direction and check every step. Check here 1.8 volts. Is it okay or not? If 1.8 volt 
is missing. We have to go and check the IC. Is the IC overheated or not? And then go and check the IC input. Is all inputs are good or not? If you find that there is a missing output, for example, we have to go and check this IC. The first IC, is it good or not? If the IC seems to be good, we have to go and check the inputs here. So because the absence of 1.8 volt could be the IC, could be inputs are absent, could be this IC or could be the inputs because this is the source for 1.8 volt, this is the source over here. So I hope guys you understand this schematic. This is a very important schematic. And of course, sometimes you can find shorted IC. When you find, for example, this IC is shorted, you're gonna find also this serum capacitors are shorted. So when you find a shorted capacitor in both sides, it could be the serum capacitor itself, but it could be the IC also. Okay, why? Because these capacitors are connected to the ground in one side and also here the IC connected to the ground in the other side. So if there is a short somewhere here in the IC, you will find that the serum capacitors are shorted. So guys, I hope that you understand this schematic and you understand how to test the IC. Basically, you cannot test the IC like other component like capacitor, resistor, etc. You can test the IC using, of course, the three steps we have see, seen before by using the data sheet and check the inputs and outputs, by checking the head of the IC using your finger, and also by using the serum capacitor around the IC. If you find that the shorted capacitors, all shorted serum capacitors around the IC are shorted, it could be about 90%. The IC is the shorter component. So guys, thank you very much. I hope that you understand the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and join me in my Patreon page if you want more exclusive content. And of course, all links in the description for my Patreon page, for my website, for more hardware articles, etc. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.